Welcome back to another episode of Silent Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and today I'll be reviewing the movie Tarantula from 1955. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. A spider escaped from an isolated Arizona desert laboratory, experimenting in gigantism, and grows to a tremendous size as it wrecks havoc on the local inhabitants. So let's begin with my first pro. I would dare to say that the first pro is that this is one of the best 1950s monster movies there is. I do have to admit that the technique used used here in this film is quite simple but it does get the job done versus the other movies that use stop motion clay animation for the monsters or puppet monsters i was more impressed by how easy the special effect was well i would say by today's standards but i would assume that back then it was quite something to see on the big screen just seeing how the technique was used in the movie and how believable it seemed back then is kind of amazing to see and how far we've gone with special effects next pro the science ramblings about how the monster came to be from the scientist's point of view is not half bad versus other plots from other movies such as it came from the middle of the earth or it came from outer space or it lived deep in the amazon stuff like that this version with the science aspect behind it and the reason they wanted to make the quote-unquote medicine solution is sort of a believable due to the reasoning behind it about human population and the food scarcity which is a real topic even nowadays so just having that back up the reason why they started experimenting on the lab animals and stuff like that seems kind of possible and something like this would be believable back then next pro okay so we recall the last throwback thursday movie we reviewed having clean iswood in it as his first main role in movies that actually began his career why do i bring this up it's because he was an extra in this film but never got credited he was the fighter pilot flying the plane close to the end of the film but you couldn't tell it was him because he was wearing the mask but yep that's him working as an extra in films and even tv series back in those years right before his career took off next pro i gotta say the dialogue is not that bad in this film they do have some lines here and there that make references to women in those times such as dr hastings joking with stevie the female assistant when he says give the woman the vote and what do you get lady scientist he says it as a joke but he means that stevie is worthy of becoming a lady scientist and by all means he's not taking anything away from women or when steve herself says to the professor science is science but a girl must get her hair done this is a reference to her being still feminine while still dabbing in the science nowadays there's no no need to point that out because everybody knows women are capable just as men but back then they were still seen as a damsel in distress as the men are mostly portrayed as being strong-minded and brave and now on to my cons so we talked about how they kind of sold the monster being created by the radioactive isotope that was being used to cure hunger and how it makes sense for scientists to tackle that issue but nowadays they kind of stay away from radioactive material when they cure hunger or at least we hope so but you get the idea what i don't get is how they all reach the the same conclusion of nuking the monster versus finding another solution and here i was thinking that oh hastings went to see the other scientists to analyze the venom and he is shown a film reel that shows a natural predator of the tarantula being a spider wasp and how the tarantula does not have fear and normally burrows to hide away from his enemies i thought okay dr hastings will say we need a giant spider wasp to kill the tarantula and then go out looking for a giant hole or a cave where the tarantula might be hiding and once the tarantula is dead and the spider wasp could be fatally wounded or still alive they cave in the cave and seal both inside and end credits here you either got rid of the monsters or they can return for a future film and have a part two but no what i was thinking is not the 1950s answer which is bomb them all to hell so they actually ended the movie with a really anticlimactic scene ending with no explanation just having them stand around and watch the spider die and that was case close oh let me add this here instead of having a separate con for a spider that size how does nobody else see it or spot it in the desert or the doctor see it when he's flying his plane into town i mean is the spider hiding behind a giant bush or something next con the death of the other scientists and their conditions i know that during these times they wanted everything to look sort of monsterish but couldn't they make the scientists die a different way maybe slowly or the last one as he's dying he's lending his knowledge to help stop the spider think about it when the first plan with the dynamite doesn't work the professor could lure the spider somewhere into a cave with science or a large dose of the solution that he was creating technically the solution is a nutrient based or sort of food for it so there's a trap and there's a lure and to sweeten the deal you could have the professor be the one inside the cave to detonate the dynamite to seal the cave a brave sacrifice to correct his mistakes but hey making his face look all weird and sort of melting is more shocking i guess back then for the audience who would go see this movie in theaters so my final grade for this movie is going to be a 7 out of 10 the film was sort of enjoyable and mostly due because it was interesting to see how they saw things in 1950s or 
actually get an idea of what the films in the 1950s wanted to portray. And also, it's a 1950s monster movie. And I wanted to hear the idea of them selling the monster in this movie versus other movies that is like it just happened to appear out of nowhere. And I got to say, it was a bit believable, but man, how they solved the problem in under five minutes, like damn, that's the US attitude in 1950s. If you can't solve it logically, just nuke the hell out of it. Oh, and also the fighter pilot who was Clean Eastwood makes it really interesting to know that he's in the movie but not credited. And this is how Clean Eastwood began his career as an extras in other movies. If you don't know about Clean Eastwood before movies, that he was in the army in real life and he actually survived out in the open ocean and he swam to shore, you should look that story up because I can't believe that that true story is not a movie yet. So that does it for this review of Tarantula. Please join us next time where we're going to review The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. Mr. and Mrs. Lubitsch, he was born exactly like your first son with no amenities whatsoever, but he's alive. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.